What exactly is Cedar Point up to? The park recently announced that they are going to be relocating Scrambler and the Matterhorn over to the new boardwalk area. So why did the park decide to move these two classic attractions and is this the first move of a larger one that's for Cedar Point's next major roller coaster? This is Theme Park Predictions and more and I'm creating a new series of videos that is going to be called Theme Park Speculation. So not really my predictions but just me thinking about the whys and the what ifs. With rumors going around that Corkscrew's days are numbered, moving these two flat rides would make a lot of sense to really free up even more room for the park. Which means that there is a slight chance that 2023 might actually be the last year for this classic aero coaster that flips you upside down three separate times. Now you might be one of those who says, no way, Cedar Point will never remove Corkscrew, and I really get it, I do. And even though Corkscrew doesn't take up much room, 1.6 acres to be exact, this coaster isn't getting the ridership that it used to. And if you really think that Cedar Fair won't do this, well, I have news for you because people thought the same exact thing before they found out that King's Island was going to remove their Vortex, which also happens to be a classic aero coaster since it was the first one in the world to flip riders upside down six different times. And not to mention, when Vortex first opened in 1986, it was the world's tallest full circuit roller coaster. So tell me again, why won't Cedar Point remove Corkscrew? Now don't get me wrong, I would hate to see the 85 foot tall blue track arrow bite the dust. But its removal is something to definitely keep an eye on. And this roller coaster is very sentimental for me because this was the very first coaster that I've ever rode that featured inversions. And I was 10 years old when I first rode it and I remember that ride like it was yesterday. So if Cedar Point would remove Corkscrew, then this is the area along with the Matterhorn and Scrambler area that the park would have to work with. And you're probably thinking at first glance, this area is too small to fit a large scale coaster, but it's not. Now get ready to get your mind blown because here is a list of major roller coasters that take up less room than the highlighted area that I'm showcasing you right now. And the first one is Cedar Point's own Valraven, which sits on 2.5 acres. Copperhead Strike down at Carowinds covers 1.6 acres. And saving the best for last, Last, Velocicoaster only takes up 2.5 acres. So three major steel coasters that are built on an area that is actually smaller than this section of Cedar Point. But it's safe to say that Cedar Point needs a modern wooden roller coaster over another steel one. Which leads us to this question, would there be room for one in this area? And the answer here is yes. Because obviously the wooden coaster would have to feature an out and back style layout for it to work, but mix in some low to the ground twisted turns and tunnels, then the park would have a real winner on their hands. As iconic as Course Screw was, I really need to ask you an honest question, and that is, did you ride it during your last visit to Cedar Point? So let's say Cedar Point is going to remove course screw. What type of roller coaster could they fit in this area and how large will it be? I'm going to share with you three potential coaster types that could fit on this plot of land. And with the last one, I'm actually going to show you my drawing of just how good this coaster type would fit in this area. First up would be the modern wooden roller coaster. And there's a lot of things GCI or even the Gravity Group could do with the wooden coaster in this area. I'd imagine for any coaster, the station being located in this area here, that way the layout can use the old course screws plot of land. This would also eliminate too much congestion if the entrance of the new coaster was located right across from Top Door Dragster. And of course, at the time of this video, we do not know what Cedar Point is planning on doing with their Intamin Strata, but for the sake of this video and my vision for the area, it will not get removed. 
With Cedar Fair adding Zambezi Zinger to Worlds of Fun, this could be a stepping stone project for Cedar Fair, meaning they plan on adding a much larger version of this coaster to another park in the future. Now I'm not saying a full-fledged Titan track coaster since obviously Cedar Point already has Steel Vengeance, but what if Cedar Point would build a larger version of this that features a few sections of Titan track but the rest all wooden track? Now what I don't like about a wooden coaster in this area is how the wood structure would take away from the beautiful sight line as you're walking down the main midway. As for the other types of coasters, I still think it's possible that we could see a Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster come to Cedar Point. I will say that I had a lot more faith in this idea before Hang Time gave Knott's Berry Farm a lot of issues this year. Now what I love about a Gerstlauer Infinity in this area is that the coaster could feature a launch, launches, and or a lift hill. Plus, we know Gerstlauer can squeeze a lot of awesomeness into a very tight footprint. For example, let's take a look at Monster at Adventureland, a coaster that features over 2,500 feet of track, 5 inversions, and 133 foot tall vertical lift hill. And believe it or not, but the footprint of Monster takes up less than an acre. So, if Cedar Point wanted to, they could literally triple the size of this coaster in this location and still have room left. Obviously, Cedar Point would need a larger version of this due to capacity and the Infinity trains that offer 20 riders each, but it's still possible. Then throw in the awesome lighting package from KLC Engineering and you have yourself a great looking coaster that runs along this midway. As for the last coaster, well, it's the one that I want most for Cedar Point, and that would be a mock extreme spinner. After riding Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City and hearing all the rave reviews from the Ride of Happiness at Palapsa Land, this type of coaster is going to blow up. Not only are they fun, but they offer a different riding experience every single time. And a layout like the Ride of Happiness only takes up 1.6 acres, which happens to be the same exact amount of space that Corkscrew takes up. To give you an even better idea of just how good a mock extreme spinner could fit in this area, I drew up a mock drawing of one that would feature over 3,500 feet of track and would pay incredible homage to Corkscrew. Here is a look at the entrance plaza for the new coaster that would feature the ride's queue line, fast lane, and the coaster's exit. Also, since Power Tower doesn't need that enormous queue line anymore, I would cut the current one in half and move the entrance right next to the ride's exit. As for the layout for the new coaster, it would start off with a JoJo roll right out of the station, and then do a 180 degree turn to the right to enter the ride's first launch. After waiting for a few seconds, the train would then launch into the tallest element of the coaster and that would be a very tall inversion that would be described as a mix between an inverted top hat and a giant corkscrew. Following that element, the layout would feature a vertical loop that is in the exact same area as the vertical loop from corkscrew. From there, the layout would enter a tunnel before the first airtime moment, which would be a giant high-speed S-turn. Then, riders would experience two back-to-back low-to-the-ground turns before entering a step-up under-flip inversion. Once the train exits the twisted inversion, it enters the rolling launch. The train will not stop here, but instead get launched to higher speeds to complete the rest of the coaster's layout. Now before I talk about the two most notable elements of the ride's second half, there would be room here as you see for a new thrilling flat ride if Cedar Point wanted to add another ride to this area, which honestly would really help Cedar Point since it doesn't offer too many modern ones at the moment. Just imagine a Zamperla Air Race in this location with the Extreme Spinner launching right behind it. Now once the coaster exits the second launch, it would travel into a giant figure 8 element that features two overbank turns and a few low to the ground ones. And finally, the last element of the new coaster would be a course screw that travels right over the midway, just like the original course screw once did. So that is me using my imagination and Google metrics to design a realistic layout for a mock extreme spinner that could fit very well into this area of Cedar Point. Now for my final thoughts. I have heard rumblings of Cedar Point possibly removing Corkscrew, and I do honestly think its days are numbered and could be the next Cedar Point coaster to go. 
The area where the Matterhorn and Scrambler sits is very intriguing. So what does Cedar Point have planned for this area? A new flat ride? Or is this an even larger project like what I'm sharing right now? What do you think? Be sure to let me know in the comments because if this area is indeed for a new roller coaster, what type do you think would fit well into this area? Again, be sure to let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to smile today, think positive, and keep riding coasters.